Number 9. Hegra During the 1st century BC, an ancient group called the Nabataeans established a bustling international trade hub in what is now northwestern Saudi Arabia. Known as Hegra or Madaina Saleh, the city was built at the foot of a basaltic plateau in the Hejaz Mountains. The builders took advantage of the landscape, carving intricate structures out of massive boulders. With elements of Greek, Roman, and other styles of architecture, the buildings resemble those of Petra, the Nabataean Kingdom's capital and its only city that was larger than Hegra. Before they came to dominate the incense and spice trades throughout much of the Middle East and the Mediterranean, the Nabataeans were desert-dwelling Bedouin nomads. By the 4th century BC, they had become exorbitantly wealthy through their trading activities. They subsequently established Petra and Hegra as their designated commercial headquarters, using their sophisticated knowledge of the landscape to develop a water system that enabled them to survive in the harsh, unforgiving climate. Much of Hegra's history was lost after the Romans annexed the Nabataean Kingdom in 106 AD. Aside from its elegant and grand houses of worship, monumental tombs, and other structures, the mysterious civilization left little behind for modern experts to learn from. Most of what we know about the Nabataeans comes from Greek, Roman, and Egyptian documents. Cryptic inscriptions found on some of Hegra's tombs include intimidating warnings that trespassers will be cursed. Several high-ranking Nabataean officers and their families were laid to rest in the city, but the stories and history behind many of the tombs are still unknown, and for some reason, several of these buildings were abandoned when they were only partially finished. Number 8. Bagan Bagan was a beautiful ancient city founded in Myanmar's Mandalay region during the 2nd century. It served as the capital of a Burmese dynasty called the Pagan Kingdom, which unified the regions that comprise modern-day Myanmar. As the kingdom's capital, Bagan functioned as a major political, economic, and cultural center that focused on both secular and religious studies. It had anywhere between 50,000 and 200,000 residents at its peak. Religion dominated the culture during the city's heyday, which lasted from the 11th to the 13th century. During that time, the surrounding Bagan plains had as many as 10,000 Buddhist temples, pagodas, and monasteries. But the people at Bagan were unusually tolerant and fluid for the time when it came to other belief systems, including Hinduism and animism. The bustling urban center collapsed in 1287 amid repeated Mongol attacks. Invading forces did very little physical damage to Bagan, but they reduced its population to the size of a small town. Following the empire's fall, the Minsang Kingdom became Burma's ruling power. Bagan's temples continued to serve as pilgrimage destinations for some time, but the structures were neglected and eventually fell into disrepair. Many of the temples were destroyed beyond repair when a major earthquake struck in 1975. During the 1990s, the Myanmar government attempted to restore some of these buildings, but its efforts were met with widespread criticism from experts who accused the restorers of failing to consider the original architectural styles. Then, in 2016, another earthquake struck, significantly damaging around 400 temples. Today, there are 2,200 remaining structures at Bagan, which is a popular tourist destination and one of Burma's only two designated UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Number 7. Kimuna During the 15th century BC, a kingdom called the Mitanni Empire ruled over an area that encompassed parts of modern-day Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. When it fell to the Assyrians sometime during the 14th or 13th century BC, the short-lived dynasty's culture was destroyed by its conquerors, leaving behind very little in the way of historical records and archaeological evidence. Consequently, the Mitanni people's origins, ethnicity, and lifestyle are a mystery. Even their capital, Taidu, has never been found. In 2019, a drought caused the waters of the Mosul Dam Reservoir in northern Iraq to recede, exposing the ruins of a Mitanni city called Kemune. Archaeologists discovered the site in 2010, but this was the first time water levels were low enough for them to actually explore the area. They identified a palace with 20-foot-high walls and chambers that once housed vivid paintings. Located to the south of the city, it overlooked the Tigris River from 65 feet away. The grand structure is one of just four Mitanni palaces ever discovered. Unlike the other three which sat on the outskirts of the empire, it was located at the center of Mitanni territory. The team also found 10 clay tablets inscribed with Mitanni cuneiform. It's one of the earliest known forms of writing. 
A translation of one tablet suggests that Kimune was originally called Zakiku. It wasn't long before the site was once again submerged, leaving the archaeologists with no choice but to wait until it's once again exposed to return. In a CNN interview at the time, excavation leader Ivana Pugliz said that the team hoped to learn more about the mysterious civilization from the artifacts they collected. Number 6. Medieval Castle for decades, the owners of Sultan Hall, an ancient manor in Shropshire, England, wondered why there was a strange mound in their backyard. Knowing the property's history of human occupation goes back thousands of years, Tim Ashton and his family suspected that it might contain valuable clues about the matter's past. Archaeologists finally excavated the mound this year and found the remains of what appears to be a medieval castle. They believe it dates back to the 13th century and have so far uncovered a sandstone wall and wet timber that may have once been part of a moat bridge. In addition to the structures, the team found a medieval pilgrim's badge shaped like a small cross, which may have featured a figure of Jesus Christ at some point. Christians wore these souvenirs as they traveled to Catholic holy places. A volunteer also found a 13th century vessel called an ampulla, which pilgrims used for carrying holy water and oil. Sultan Hall was built during the 17th century, but wealthy members of society lived at the site as early as 1086 AD. Neolithic flints dating back roughly 5,500 years have also been found there, suggesting that the property's human history goes back much further. Have you ever found anything cool buried on your property? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Bahangar Fort in 1573, a ruler named Raja Bhagwan Singh built a sprawling fort for his son, Madho Singh, in what is now the state of Rajasthan in northern India. Known as the Bahangar Fort, the site was a flourishing town with as many as 10,000 residents during its heyday. It was filled with grand temples, marketplaces, and stunning mansions or havelis. Several legends attempt to explain why Bahangar Fort was ultimately abandoned. One story claims that a Hindu ascetic named Baba Balak Nath insisted on having the settlement's tallest home and assured that the town would be destroyed if someone went against his wishes. When the fort was built, it cast a shadow on his dwelling and he retaliated by cursing the structure. Another tale tells of a black magic magician who tried to woo a beautiful Bahangar princess with a special love potion. She rejected him and threw the concoction at a boulder, triggering the giant rock to roll over the magician and crush him. That is a little harsh. As he lay dying, he cursed the fort, promising that it would become unlivable. Today, Bahangar Fort is considered one of India's most haunted sites. Several people have died in accidents there, prompting the Archaeological Survey of India to ban overnight visitors. This was supposedly done for safety reasons, but some people believe that the authorities are trying to keep people out when spiritual activity is at its highest. Number 4. Merv the ancient city of Merv was founded during the 6th century BC by the Persian Achaemenid Empire in the Karakum Desert of what is now southern Turkmenistan. Its advantageous location along the Silk Road trade route made it a highly sought-after prize for the Greeks, Arabs, and Turks who all controlled the city at various points throughout its history. Merv peaked under the rule of the Seljuk Turks. By the 13th century, it was the world's biggest city, with a population of over 500,000 residents, and it continued to grow. The walled metropolis functioned as an oasis and an administrative and commercial center with sophisticated features including canals, gardens, reservoirs, bridges, greenery, streets, mosques, libraries, bathhouses, schools, markets, and more. It was also a cultural and educational center that attracted poets, musicians, astronomers, physicians, physicists, mathematicians, and other intellectuals. In 1221, Genghis Khan's son, Tului Khan, led a Mongol army into the city. The invaders laid siege to Merv, slaughtering somewhere between 700,000 and a million people, nearly the entire population. Then, they set fire to the metropolis. Merv was destroyed. Several rulers attempted to rebuild it, but they never managed to restore the once bustling urban center to its former glory. Looking at the decaying ruins of Merv today, it's hard to imagine it as a flourishing city. Number 3. Thulamela The ancient city of Thulamela thrived between the 13th and 17th century in what is now Kruger National Park in South Africa. Today, the 22-acre site consists of several stone enclosures that sit on a hill. 
Thulamela's residents lived in what anthropologist Lynn Mescal described as a stratified society. Mescal believes that around a thousand elites occupied the top of the hill, while around 2,000 members of other classes lived on the lower levels, although she admits that these numbers are purely speculative. Modern researchers named the city Thulamela. Nobody knows what its inhabitants actually called it. A park ranger rediscovered the settlement in 1983, and it was finally investigated during the 1990s after South Africa's racially divisive apartheid system ended. Porcelain, glass beads, and other objects found during excavations were traced to as far away as China and elsewhere, reflecting Thulamela's far-reaching ties with civilizations in North Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Archaeologists also found the burials of a seemingly royal couple that contained royal goods such as gold necklaces, bangles, beads, and other jewelry. In addition to working with gold, Thulamela's residents also crafted bronze, iron, and copper objects. Some of their creations resemble items found at other archaeological sites, including Mapungubwe in modern-day northern South Africa and Great Zimbabwe in what is now the country of Zimbabwe. The prosperous city was abandoned during the 17th century for unknown reasons. According to the study, evidence shows that Thulamela began drying out in the years leading to its desertion. It's likely that various factors contributed to the settlement's downfall, including including civil war, an increased Portuguese colonial presence, but for now, experts admittedly do not have the full picture of exactly what happened to this once thriving metropolis. Number 2. Ur The Bible mentions an ancient Sumerian city-state called Ur. It's the place that Abraham left behind when he relocated to Canaan at God's instruction. While many people doubt the Bible's claims, understandably so, Ur was actually a real place. In fact, it became a prosperous trade hub even before it was mentioned in scripture. Founded around 3800 BC or perhaps even earlier in what is now Iraq, this powerful Persian Gulf port city had as many as 80,000 residents at its peak. Ur was continuously inhabited until around 450 BC when climate change and the overuse of land prompted the population to flee northward to more fertile territory. Italian explorer Pietro della Valle rediscovered Ur in 1625. While traveling through the area, he noticed bricks and other artifacts bearing strange inscriptions. At the time, the city's ruins were buried beneath the sand. British archaeologist Sir Leonard Woolley excavated the site in 1922 and found that Ur is largely reduced to rubble. The city's most visible surviving remnant is a partially restored ziggurat that was unearthed during the 1930s. It was originally built during the 21st century BC and was rebuilt under Babylonian's last king, Nabonidus, during the 6th century BC. Time and the elements have transformed the coastline. What's left of Ur sits much further inland than it did during its heyday when it was a coastal city located near the mouth of the Euphrates River. The ruins are helping archaeologists learn more about the culture that built and lived in Ur, but their knowledge is limited by what little is available at the site, and there are still many mysteries surrounding the ancient city. Number 1. Chalcatzingo Around 1500 BC, an ancient settlement called Chalcatzingo sprang up in Mexico's central highlands. They developed a complex culture around 900 BC, around the same time that one of Mesoamerica's oldest civilizations, the Olmecs, established a presence in the region. Elements of the architecture and artistic style found at Chalcatzingo indicate that its inhabitants were Olmec settlers or had close ties to the Olmecs. Images of large-toothed wildcats at the site suggest that the city's residents shared in the Olmec worship of the jaguar. The artwork includes depictions of big cats with beaks and other unnatural features, as well as felines engaging in violent acts. One carving shows a ferocious jaguar disemboweling a human. The settlement was situated along intersecting trade routes that connected the Olmecs with Mesoamerican societies throughout Mexico. At its peak, Chalcatzingo was home to somewhere between 500 and 1,000 residents who grew staple crops like corn. They nourished their fields with water from a nearby mountain stream. Chalcatzingo experienced an abrupt decline around 500 BC, around the same time that the Olmec civilization collapsed. Researchers believe that environmental factors are responsible for the Olmecs' fall outside Chalcatzingo. While these events did not directly affect the city, its population likely suffered a cultural decline and economic hardship resulting from decreased trade and contact with other groups. The Olmecs' origins are unknown, and nobody knows how widespread the civilization really was. And while the Aztecs called them the Olmecs, we don't know for sure what they called themselves. 
Experts know very little about their religion beyond their apparent jaguar worship and evidence indicating that they had some sort of organized belief system and priesthood. Until or unless more discoveries are made, our understanding of this early Mesoamerican society will remain incomplete. Number 10. Tibetan Kapala Skulls Tibetan Kapala skulls are some of the creepiest archaeological relics anywhere in the world. These bizarre skulls were used as bowls or vessels in rituals for both Hindus and Buddhists. Each skull was carved with decorative designs and usually embedded with jewels. And yes, they were made from real human skulls, usually collected from burial sites. But they weren't taken from any ordinary burial sites. It was, and still is, a Tibetan burial custom to chop up the bodies of the dead and then scatter their remains over the mountain plains. These are called sky burials, and it is where the Kapala skulls would be pillaged from. These skulls were used in Tibetan monasteries, usually to hold wine and bread, which symbolized flesh and blood in rituals. The bread would be shaped to look like human eyes and ears before being eaten out of the skull. And although these things were normally used for ordinary spiritual purposes, some people used them for the dark arts. Sometimes, a kapala was fashioned from the skull of a murder victim or someone who was sacrificed. These would then be used in dark rituals because it was believed the skull of someone who died violently possessed more power. Number 9. The Arm of St. John the Baptist There is a creepy relic being kept in the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul, said to be the right arm of John the Baptist. The arm was apparently transported from Antioch to Constantinople in the year 956 by Emperor Constantine VII. It was brought to the Church of the Virgin of the Lighthouse and kept in the treasury. The arm was seized by the Ottomans in 1453 when they conquered the city, but then in 1585 it was returned by Sultan Murad III. It remained in Topkapi Palace ever since. The arm, although it may look like the arm of a robot, is indeed the arm of a skeleton encased inside of a gold embellished silver reliquary. But just where did the arm come from in the first place? According to written history, it was Luke the Evangelist who went to the place of John's burial and took the right arm himself. This is because John's right arm was the one that baptized Jesus. The actual arm that performed Jesus' baptism is obviously considered to be one of the holiest relics in the world. There's been no scientific proof that the arm does indeed belong to anyone named John the Baptist, the fabled man who defied King Herod and was beheaded for it. But still, the arm has been spoken of in the historical texts for nearly 2,000 years. It could very well be the real deal, though it's definitely creepy. Number 8. The Family Cat An urban explorer was shocked when he went to investigate an abandoned house that had been left to rot and discovered a creepy doll and the skeleton of an old cat. This happened in Scotland, and the house was probably abandoned sometime in the early 1970s. It was found by a guy named Adam Mark, who thought it would be a good idea to go exploring through the house's decaying rooms. The place definitely seemed like it could be haunted, and he reported that he felt the sense he wasn't alone while he went from room to room. He found the house in the same state it was when whoever had owned it packed up and left. Except they didn't really pack up anything at all. All the creepy antiques were still on the mantles. The cupboards were filled with antique dishes and tea sets, and they even had forgotten their cat. Adam found the forgotten feline mummified on the floor. There was even a creepy doll with its eyes missing, just sitting in a chair and seemingly staring at something outside the window. He described the atmosphere as dark and extremely eerie. And to make things even creepier, Adam claims that he found police tape outside the house, suggesting it may have been the scene of some kind of terrifying crime. Um, hey, Adam, I think it's called trespassing. Number 7. Ritual Beheading Recent evidence has uncovered what might just be the oldest case of ritual beheading anywhere in the Americas. A decapitated human was discovered inside a rock shelter in Brazil. After dating the skeletal remains, scientists learned the person had their head cut off somewhere between 9,100 and 9,400 years ago. But they didn't just get their head cut off as the ancient person was also found with the right hand amputated and pressed against the left side of their face. This is an obvious sign of ritualistic activity, though nobody can really say what the unusual ritual detailed or what its exact purpose was. 
The discovery keeps getting worse and worse. Scientists learned that the man was decapitated by a series of painful blows from a sharp instrument hitting him in the neck. But evidence also showed that his head was twisted in some places, meaning whoever was trying to cut it off had to twist it around a bunch, like ripping the head off a doll. Ouch! It's now clear that almost 10,000 years ago, during the Neolithic period, the barbaric tribes throughout America had a fascination with rituals and were inclined to decapitate people. Number 6. The Headless Man A woman discovered the creepiest photo ever hidden in a room in her house. This happened back in January of this year, when the woman and her husband found a secret room inside the house they had just recently moved into. They were taking down layers of wallpaper stacked on top of one another. When they found the entrance to the creepy room, which had no windows and was completely dark. It was within this room that the woman found a black and white photograph showing a young boy sitting in front of a garage inside a toy car. This itself isn't all that weird. The creepy part is what's behind the little boy. Standing a few feet back was a headless man in a white jacket. His arms hang casually by his sides. He has absolutely no head and he looks like a monster from a horror movie. It's unlikely that the person in the photo was really missing their head though. They probably used some kind of light trick to make them look headless in the photo. They then maybe placed the photo in the secret room because they knew it would scare the pants off of whoever found it. Either that or the people who had lived in the house before really were a bunch of creeps, perhaps dabbling in some evil dark magic. The question here is if the headless man in the photo was intentional, why? Why do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Giant Cave Spider A creepy new species of spider has been discovered in a Mexican cave. Scientists say the spider is about the size of a softball. Yikes. Even if you're not an arachnophobe, you have to appreciate the horror of a spider that's about the size of your fist. Did you just hold your fist up to compare size? Yikes again. It was found by researchers working with the San Diego Natural History Museum. Jim Berrien and his team discovered this freaky arachnid while exploring the mountains of Baja California Sur. When they went deep into the cave, they found a massive exoskeleton suspended from the ceiling. They realized the cave was probably full of all kinds of spooky critters, so they went back at night and began hunting for spiders in the darkness. They've called this new species the Sierra Cacachilla's Wandering Spider. Maria Jimenez, a local spider expert, said that she was impressed with how big the spider is, going on to say that in all her years studying spiders in Baja California, she had never seen one so large. The body is about an inch long and the legs are about four inches across. About two dozen of these eight-legged creepy crawlies were found inside the cave, suggesting that the species must have evolved only within its confines, never expanding into the world outside. And this is good news because the spider is absolutely terrifying. It's not fatal if it bites you, but it's still pretty freaky. Someone should check to see if a bite from the newly discovered spider gives you Spider-Man powers. Number 4. Haunted Hotel An extremely creepy discovery has been made in a Texas salon when a woman discovered a secret door that led to a haunted hotel behind a mirror. According to the original story, the woman had experienced a nightmare in which there was a secret door behind a mirror in her salon. And so, when she went into work the next day, she decided to investigate. Much to her dismay, there really was a secret door when she removed the mirror. The portal had been filled up and blocked with concrete from the other side, but the door was definitely there. Here's where things get extra creepy. The salon is attached to the infamously haunted Rogers Hotel, which was built in the early 1800s and then remodeled in 1912. As part of the remodeling, the door was likely sealed leading into the salon. At one point, the two were connected, though nobody can say why. As for why the Rogers Hotel is haunted, local legend says that there have been several deaths in the hotel, including the daughter of Rogers himself, who allegedly drowned in a pool in the basement. People who visit the hotel sometimes claim to see bottles of water across the floor, and sometimes even the silhouette of a wet child. Do you think it's a coincidence that this Texas woman had a nightmare about the secret door only to discover it truly existed? Do you think something sinister provoked her to check? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Number 3. Shipwreck Skeleton In 1984, 
Underwater archaeologist Barry Clifford stumbled upon the wreckage of the Wyatt Galley, the only verified pirate shipwreck from the Golden Age of Piracy ever discovered. The Golden Age of Piracy lasted between 1650 and 1720. At the time, archaeologists were able to bring to the surface a whole heap of interesting artifacts from the vessel. However, it wasn't until recently that they found six skeletons trapped inside the underwater wreckage. The wider galley was stolen by Sam Bellamy, a pirate who arrived in Cape Cod back in 1715 and set off in his pirate ship looking for treasure. He managed to take over 53 ships throughout his life as a pirate, becoming one of the wealthiest raiders of the sea in history. However, after capturing the Waida, Bellamy's luck ran out. In April of 1717, the ship became enveloped in a blanket of thick fog off the coast of Massachusetts, hit a sandbar, and sank. Only six out of the 144 crew members survived, and the ship was lost for over 260 years. Since its discovery, at least 200,000 pieces of artifacts have been excavated. The most recent discovery of the creepy bones has proved quite fascinating, as one of the leg bones is speculated to belong to the pirate captain himself. Number 2. Bog Bodies 2,400 years ago, a man was buried in a bog. We don't know his name or why exactly he was buried, but we do know he was between 30 and 40 years old and that the acidic peat of the bog mummified his body to perfection. His hair, brain, and fingernails have all been perfectly preserved. Even the noose was still stuck around his neck. He was obviously hanged, but scientists have no idea as to why. This particular bog body is nicknamed the Tolland Man, and he was found in Denmark back in the 1950s. In 2021, scientists finally did a bit of dissecting on the bog man to discover what he ate for his last meal. They found that he ate porridge made from barley, flax, and plant seeds before being hung and then tossed into the bog. What's strange about this is the fact that he had seeds in his porridge. Seeds were not typically part of the Iron Age diet, suggesting whoever killed this guy had given him a special meal with special ingredients, perhaps as some kind of mysterious human sacrifice ritual. He's currently on display at the Silkeborg Museum. Number 1. Ancient Stone Mask A very creepy stone mask was recently unveiled by the Israel Antiquities Authority. The mask dates back to the Neolithic period, about 9,000 years ago. It's incredibly rare, crafted from stone, and nobody knows where it was originally found. The mask was actually recovered by an antiquities theft prevention unit back in 2018. Nobody knows where the person who acquired it got it from originally, leaving this artifact a total mystery. The mask looks oddly like the creepy mask that Jim Carrey wore in the movie The Mask, though this one probably doesn't have any magical powers. Four holes were found drilled along its perimeter, likely used to tie it to a person's face. Why anyone would wear such a horrifying thing is beyond reason. But then again, this was nearly 10 millennia ago. The mask has eye holes, a small slit for breathing, and even teeth traced around the mouth. It definitely has something to do with a creepy prehistoric ritual, but scientists can't say for sure. Nothing else like it has ever been found. Number 10. Hero Pilot The remains of a bomber pilot who sacrificed himself during World War II to save his crew have been found 74 years after his heroic death. His remains were discovered 230 feet underwater off the coast of Croatia. His name was 2nd Lieutenant Ernest Vieno, and he vanished on November 6, 1944, while flying his B-17 bomber and being attacked by anti-aircraft guns. He managed to land the aircraft in the sea so that his crew could escape. Nice guy. However, he was not as lucky, and he went down with the bummer as it sank below the waves to Davy Jones's locker. The army told his family that he was lost at sea, and that was the end of it. At least it was until Steve Jones, who runs a local dive center, discovered the ghostly bummer back in 2016. It's still sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Amazingly, the pilot's body was still inside. He wasn't alone either. Algae and all kinds of fish have been keeping him company. The craft itself was in surprisingly good condition too, looking as though it had landed peacefully at the bottom of the ocean, never to start its propellers up again. Ernest's family has requested that if the divers ever return to the wreck, they leave flowers on the co-pilot's seat. Number 9. 
Air Raid Shelter A woman named Mia Gray found an air raid shelter from World War II in her Scottish tenement. The shelter had remained concealed underneath a literal mountain of junk for decades. It's not really clear if Mia was a hoarder or not, but she had been living in the house for about four years before she finally decided to clean out the old Victorian washroom in the basement. She knew it was full of junk when she moved in, but just never had the time to organize all the stuff or get it out. When she finally did remove all the junk, she found that the vintage washroom was actually an air raid shelter intended to keep a small group of people safe in case of a bombing. The room had bunk beds, a small stove, and even a reinforced roof. And to think, this was right under her nose the entire time. She told news outlets, I just thought it was amazing to see it, a real piece of social history, but I didn't have any idea whether it was a common thing. I'd lived in tenements before that hadn't had the basement area, so I wasn't sure if this was an unusual find. Yes, Mia, it is still an incredible find. Mia's tenement building is in Edinburgh, and even though Edinburgh wasn't a major priority for the Germans to bomb, the German Luftwaffe still conducted at least 18 devastating bombing raids on the Scottish capital, killing an estimated 20 people. So, many of these air raid shelters were built, even if a lot of them didn't need to be used. During the Second World War, it was always better to be safe than sorry. Number 8. Mass Grave just last year in 2020, archaeologists discovered a mass grave from World War II in Poland that shows the sadistic evidence of a Nazi massacre. The massive burial pit was found to contain the bodies of at least 500 people, as well as the wedding rings, the bullets used to shoot them, and other personal belongings. It was quite the discovery. Archaeologists were excavating a place in Poland, locally known as Death Valley where it's been estimated that somewhere around 35,000 Polish civilians were brutally executed by the Nazi soldiers between October and November of 1939. It's known today as the Pomeranian Crime of 1939. But this newest massacre was from January of 1945. It was the second great massacre to take place in Death Valley. The Gestapo marched about 600 Polish prisoners into the rural area and executed them one by one. Ever since then, the locals were acutely aware that there were probably a pretty large number of bodies buried somewhere out in the woods, but they had never been found until now. 75 years later, the evidence of the horror that happened here was finally found. Despite the Nazis' efforts to hide the crimes, material evidence of the murders is preserved to this day. After the bodies are inspected, they'll be given proper burials in a nearby cemetery. Number 7. German U-Boat The wreckage of the most advanced U-Boat in Nazi Germany has just been discovered. This beast of a machine was sunk in 1945. It was a Type 21 submarine, a U-3523. According to the Smithsonian Institute, the sub may have been trying to smuggle the highest-ranking members of the Nazi party into Argentina when it was destroyed. This was the most advanced long-range sub the Third Reich ever developed. It had an impressive and advanced design for traveling long distances, which would have made it the perfect vessel for bringing a group of fleeing Nazis across the world as the war came to a screeching end. The submarine was found by a research ship in Denmark that was scanning the seabed off the coast. The submarine appeared on the ship's sonar sitting 400 feet under the water, with its nose buried in the dirt and twisted at a 45-degree angle. The submarine was fleeing Europe on May 6, 1945. This was just two days after Nazi troops in Denmark surrendered. A British bomber spotted a submarine and dropped death charges, sinking the vessel and killing whoever was on board, then leaving it to sink to the bottom of the ocean. Are researchers going to be able to open the sunken sub and see if it's really full of gold or Nazi high rollers? Well, since it's considered a war grave, Almost all signs point to no. How many submarines like this do you think are out there? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Giant Bomb The discovery of a giant bomb in North Carolina prompted a new wave of warnings from the Marine Corps, telling people to stay away from Browns Island. 
a 250-pound A-1 variant bomb from World War II was found under the water during high tide and the explosive ordnance disposal technicians had to quickly identify the explosive and then destroy it in a controlled blast. Even though the bomb was decades old, the strength of its explosion was powerful enough that it would have blown apart any watercraft unfortunate enough to accidentally bump into it. But here's the deal. The giant bomb was basically found floating near Brown's Island, an island that's off limits to the public because it's a weapons testing facility. This place has been used for years to test out bombs. But in more recent years, the area around the island has become popular with recreational boaters, elevating the fears of military personnel. Even though the military is warning people to stay away, people on their boats don't really care. This recent bomb scare ended up being harmless, but it very easily could have been a weakened fisherman who found their boat being blown to smithereens. Number 5. Pilot's Uniform An official military uniform that once belonged to a pilot with the Royal Air Force was recently discovered, all wrapped in old newspapers. Inside a house in East Staffordshire in the UK, a very old parcel was discovered, still wrapped in twine. The house went up for auction after the old man who lived in it died. His house was being cleared and his belongings were being packed up to sell at auction. One of the auctioneers pulled a parcel out from under the deceased old man's bed. When he unwrapped the twine, he discovered the RAF pilot uniform that was worn by crew members between 1941 and 1943, and it was in perfect condition. According to his family, the jacket probably belonged to either the old man or his brother. Almost just as cool as the pilot's uniform was the newspaper it had been bundled up in. The issue was from the year 1951. It was a page out of the Daily Express with an article explaining what a boss looks for in the ideal female secretary. What do you think the article said? Let us know in the comment section down below. Number 4. Fighter on the Beach Debbie Hartley, 51, and Graham Holden, 54, from the United Kingdom, were strolling along the beach walking their dog when they came across some pieces of metal sticking out of the sand. The metal was part of the wreckage of a very rare Royal Air Force fighter plane from World War II. The piece had been stuck in the beach sand for 76 years. Amazingly, no one had seen the wrecked vehicle until just recently. We were trying to work out what it was and just stood around there for 45 minutes. I have never seen something so amazing before in my life. It was a one in a million find. It feels like you stumbled upon a bit of history. It was just amazing. After the discovery went viral, the Royal Air Force confirmed the wreckage was that of a Bristol bow fighter. They even managed to track down its serial number and figure out that it had flown with the 254 Squadron. It participated in night missions under the cover of darkness to torpedo enemy ships sailing in the North Sea. But in 1944, one of its engines blew off to takeoff and it had to make an emergency landing on the UK's Cleethorpes Beach. It was left there and then buried in sand, forgotten for the next seven decades. What's the coolest thing you ever found on the beach? Number 3. German Panther Tank A man in Germany has been given a massive fine of 250,000 euros, equivalent to about $297,000, for holding onto a Panther tank from World War II. This guy not only had a legendary Panther tank in his basement that weighed 40 tons, he also had a full collection of military memorabilia including dozens of rifles and machine guns, about 1,000 rounds of live ammunition, a torpedo, and an 88mm anti-aircraft cannon. This guy was ready to walk right into World War II and start shooting. The Panther tank was introduced to the war in the year 1943 and was one of the best German tanks ever built. The anti-aircraft gun that the man was holding onto was one of the most devastating weapons of the war, able to take out ships aircraft and tanks from nine miles away. The discovery of all these things came in July of 2015 when authorities received a tip about the collection in the man's basement. His home had been searched before by authorities looking for stolen Nazi art. It also didn't help that the guy had fired up the tank during a bad winter to help his neighbors plow snow from the road. Can you imagine? Unfortunately for the collector, he now has to give up all his stuff 
and he has to pay a giant fine for hoarding illegal weapons and an illegal military tank. Between having to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars or wading into the hell that is arguing with your homeowners association, one thing is clear, it's probably not worth it to keep a tank at your house. Number 2. Lost Body The body of a German soldier who died during the war has just been found buried in a field in the Netherlands. The person who found the body was searching for treasure with a metal detector. The metal detectorist picked up pings from beneath the ground, signaling that there was some metal down there. So naturally, he started digging. Not only did he find pieces of ammunition and the soldier's dog tag, he found the soldier himself. As you can imagine, he quickly called the authorities. They then did an investigation and found that the German soldier had most likely died during Operation Market Garden. The operation had been carried out in 1944 by Allied forces trying to liberate Netherlands from the Germans. Thousands of paratroopers jumped out of planes and liberated a handful of areas. This German was probably shot down during the fighting and then buried in an unmarked grave. But because of Germany's privacy laws, they have yet to give out his name or properly identify him to the public. Number 1. Nazi Hideout 600 miles from Buenos Aires in the remote region of Misiones, Tim Kennedy with the US Army Special Forces went hunting for proof that Hitler ran away to Argentina after his brutal defeat at the end of World War II. Kennedy believed Hitler fled to hide out in the jungle. He was joined by archaeologist Philip Kiernan and together they investigated a trio of stone structures far from any road and far from civilization filled with dozens of strange artifacts. These artifacts included things like cans of corned beef and dehydrated milk along with an engraved box from 1940. Inside the box, the researchers found Nazi coins minted by the Third Reich, as well as a photograph of a kid in a Nazi uniform and a photo of Hitler and Mussolini, the Italian dictator. This is pretty obvious proof that the decaying jungle structures had been used by Nazis hiding from the world. It's not direct evidence that Hitler himself had used the bunkers, but it definitely shows that in 1945. When things went sour for the Nazis, many of them retreated to the South American jungles. Do you think Hitler really ran away to Argentina after the war? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more amazing videos. See you next time. Bye!